Hi there, Danica Fine here with another hands-on Kafka Connect exercise. This time, we'll be exploring the Confluent command line interface. But before we dive in though, you might need to do a bit of preparation to make sure you have all of the tools that you need. If you don't already have a Confluent Cloud account, make sure to do so now. And also take the time to complete the necessary environment setup steps. The Confluent CLI is a tool that enables developers to manage both Confluent Cloud and Confluent Platform. Built-in auto-completion is a convenient feature that helps you quickly write commands. And with authentication and machine-readable output, the CLI supports automated workflows as well. The primary goal of this exercise is to demonstrate various Confluent CLI commands that can be used to create, configure, and monitor Confluent managed connectors that are running in Confluent Cloud. We'll start by logging into Confluent Cloud, and note that we're using the save flag so that our credentials will be used for subsequent commands in this exercise. They'll remain active until you run the logout command. To make things a little easier moving forward, we'll start off by setting the active environment and cluster to use for subsequent CLI commands. First, we'll obtain the environment ID. In the Confluent org being used for this demo, there is a single environment, and its name is default. Let's set it as the active environment for the Confluent CLI command. Next, we'll set the default cluster to use. Let's obtain the cluster ID. In this demo, there is a single cluster, and its name is KC101. Let's set it as the active cluster for the Confluent CLI command. With that out of the way, we can create a new Kafka topic named Transactions, which will serve as the target for the data gen source connector. Notice the topic was created with default values of six partitions and a replication factor of three. Before proceeding, let's verify the transactions topic was created successfully. Before we create the data gen source connector instance, let's also list the fully managed connector plugins that are available for streaming with our Confluent Cloud environment. And note that this list may be a little different depending on which cloud provider Confluent Cloud is running in. So it's always a good idea to check. As you can see, the list is pretty sizable, but it does include the data gen source connector. Let's go ahead and create a data gen source connector instance. The file containing the connector instance configuration was already pre-created for you and included in the GitHub repo that was cloned earlier during the environment setup steps. All right, let's create it. To verify the connector instances status, we list all connector instances in the cluster. The data gen source connector instance appears in the list with a status of provisioning. Now this is expected as it does take a few moments for the connector to be fully provisioned and running. We need to repeat this command periodically until we see the status has changed to running before we continue. Using the connector instance ID that was included in the list command output, let's use the describe option to obtain additional details about the connector instance. Next, let's consume records from the transactions topic to verify sample data is being produced. After letting it run for a little bit, we should now have sufficient sample data in the transactions topic. So that we don't unnecessarily exhaust any Confluent Cloud promotional credits, let's delete the data gen source connector instance. With the beginning of our data pipeline complete, we can now move on to creating the downstream side of our data pipeline. We'll use the MySQL sync connector to consume records from the transactions topic and write them out to a corresponding table in our MySQL database that's running in the local Docker container that we started during the exercise environment setup steps. The file containing the connector instance configuration was created for you and included in the GitHub repo that was cloned earlier during the environment setup steps. Looking at the configuration, notice that SSL mode is set to prefer. This tells Confluent Cloud to connect using TLS if the destination host is set up to do so. Otherwise, a plain text connection will be established. For this demonstration, the local host is an AWS EC2 instance that does not have TLS set up, so the connection will be non-secure and the sample data will be unencrypted across the wire. In a production environment, we would want to be sure to set up the destination host to support TLS. Notice also the connection host. This is the public endpoint address assigned to the AWS EC2 instance. This value is shown in the AWS console display of the EC2 instance details. All right, let's go ahead and create the MySQL sync connector instance. To verify the connector instance's status, we should list all connector instances in the cluster. The MySQL sync connector instance appears in the list with the status of provisioning. 
Now this is expected as it does take a moment for the connector instance to be fully provisioned and running. We need to repeat this command periodically until we see the status has changed to running before we continue. Using the connector instance ID that was included in the list command output, let's use the describe option to obtain additional details about the connector instance. Next, let's run a query on the MySQL database to verify the connector has written records to the transactions table. And it was a success. With the connector created, let's continue with a tour of the Confluent CLI with Confluent Cloud Managed Connectors. So suppose you wanted to pause the connector instance temporarily. You'd run a command like so. Once that's run, we should verify both the connector and task are paused using this status command. And with that confirmed, we can resume the connector and its task. Again, let's check that the connector and task are once again running. Everything looks good, and they're in a running state. So that concludes the tour of the CLI commands. Now, if you run this demonstration yourself, you should tear down the environment to avoid unnecessarily accruing cost to the point your promotional credits are exhausted. Just to be sure, let's walk through that teardown process now for this environment. First, we delete the MySQL sync connector. Next, we'll delete the transactions topic. And finally, we can shut down the MySQL Docker container and free its resources. And with that taken care of, you completed the exercise and should have a decent idea of the Confluent CLI and its commands. Mm -hmm.